Hi, it's, did it, yep, it's recording. Hi, it's Teresa, and I'm here to talk to you today about anxiety, because it was requested on my last video, and I thought, why not? I mean, sometimes depression and anxiety are one and the same, and people that have experienced anxiety have experienced depression at some point in their life. So, let's talk about it. <laughs> first things first, what is anxiety? I will tell you. So anxiety is the body's natural response to danger. An automatic alarm that goes off when you feel threatened, under pressure, or facing a stressful situation. So in a way, it can be related to your flight or fight, fight or flight, flight or fight, fight, fight or flight. Ah. So in a way, it can be related to your fight or flight response. So that's when it's a psychological reaction that occurs in response to a perceived harmful event or attack or threat. So you're feeling threatened. That's a similar term, I guess, but it's, it's not quite like anxiety. So in moderation, anxiety really isn't a bad thing because I feel as though it, it's normal to experience anxiety. It's normal to feel under pressure, to feel threatened, or to be stressed out, but when it becomes abnormal and you experience it too much, that's when it becomes a disorder. And that's when it becomes taken to a whole different level. Here are some signs and symptoms of an anxiety disorder. So you might be thinking, oh yeah, I have an anxiety disorder and you just are an anxious person. Like, I know I don't have an anxiety disorder, but sometimes I can get really anxious. So if an individual or if you suffer from vicious anxiety attacks that strike without warning and you get really panicky and out of breath and it's at the thought of mingling at a party or with like a disabling fear of driving so that's when it becomes a disorder when you have that sort of mentality that becomes not normal. I mean you should be fine driving a car but someone that has an anxiety disorder will feel as though they just shouldn't be there. You know, they will feel crippled and they just can't drive. They just have this unnatural fear that shouldn't be there. So now I'm gonna tell you about some of the different types of anxiety disorders. There's not just one, there's actually a few and that I'm going to go through. So first, there's generalized anxiety disorder. And that's when constant worries and fears distract you from your day-to-day -day activities and you have this constant troubled and persistent feeling that something bad's going to happen. So they're constant and chronic worriers, people that have GAD. Then there's anxiety attacks, which is also known as panic disorder. So panic disorder is basically characterized by repeated unexpected panic attacks as well as fear of experiencing another episode. So they're constantly on edge um, and anxiety attacks kind of take on a completely different role because they're completely random and you end up experiencing this fear and sometimes it's just really hard to handle and to keep in because you don't see it coming on and you just have to kind of take deep breaths to kind of relieve yourself. But Panic disorder is also really scary. I've had a panic attack before, but I don't have panic disorder. If you have panic disorder, it happens more than once and very randomly. And if it doesn't happen often, then you most likely don't have it. You just have anxiety sometimes. So also there's obsessive compulsive disorder. And OCD is actually characterized by unwanted thoughts or behaviors that seem impossible to control. So that's why there's this like stereotype, unfortunately, that exists for OCD, which is like, I have to be neat about everything. But actually people with OCD feel like they might have to be neat or they have to constantly wash their hands. They have this constant and uncontrollable compulsion that drives them to do things over and over again or till something is completely neat and pristine. Then there's also phobias. And a phobia is an unrealistic or exaggerated fear for a specific object. Uh, so 
If you've seen some of the Maury show, I don't know if any of you have, there was this girl who actually had a fear of pickles. I still don't really know to this day if it was real, but if it is, that kind of fits this. She had a phobia of pickles, but you know, common phobias that exist are fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear of heights, fear of flying, certain things like that, but sometimes it can be taken to a completely different extreme. There's also social anxiety disorder, and basically what that is, is that if you have a debilitating fear of being seen negatively by other people, then you might have social anxiety disorder. It can also be known as extreme shyness, so it's kind of hard for you to go out and mingle with a large group, especially if you don't know them, it's really difficult for you to put yourself in that situation and meet people because, you know, you might have fear that they don't like you or, you know, it's it's just you socially don't feel like you can be there. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, is also a kind of anxiety. It's an extreme anxiety disorder that occurs after the aftermath of a really traumatic event. So that's why a lot of soldiers suffer from PTSD. Uh, you might have heard some stories about that. But basically, it can be thought of as having severe panic attacks and flashbacks or nightmares about what happened in the situation. So these are just some of the really well-known kinds of anxiety disorders. There are definitely different levels when having anxiety disorders. Some people have it more severe than others, but that doesn't make another person's anxiety disorder less than another person. It just, it really varies. However, you shouldn't self-diagnose yourself. You should definitely go to a doctor to check it out if you feel like you are suffering from some kind of anxiety disorder. But just know that it's going to be okay, that you're going to get through it. Um, what I tell some of my friends that suffer through this kind of anxiety is to definitely just take deep breaths and just breathe out, breathe in and breathe out. And I feel like, and that kind of sounds dumb, but doing Zen things like that and yoga, you know, it can really help clear your mind regardless of ex with anxiety problems, depression problems any kind of mental illness, sometimes by cleansing your mind and just breathing in and kind of helping yourself in a calm light is beneficial. But it's also important to know that if you do suffer from anxiety disorders, you have to ask yourself, are you getting the emotional support that you need? Are you having relaxation and fun? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you overloaded? Do you feel so stressed that it's just debilitating you? You know, you have to take note of these things and if some of these seem to be heightening your anxiety attacks or heightening your anxiety disorder, you need to take control and help yourself and fix that. If you're overloaded with work, try to get rid of some of it. Tell whoever is responsible that you need some time alone and to help yourself recuperate. I remember back in high school or even in college, sometimes I'll message a teacher and say, hey, I won't have this assignment done. I've been overloaded with so much work and I promise I'll give it to you the next class, but I just need, I need a break and I need a little bit extra time. So it's really important to speak out and to tell people what's going on and to make them aware that, you know, your mental health comes first. Just remember to follow those few tips about how to relieve yourself from a certain anxiety attacks, like taking a deep breath, seeking help at a doctor's office, to try to understand if your anxiety becomes a disorder. And also I find that, you know, essential oils and uh, smelling scents like lavender, uh, is it's very calming. So just anything to calm yourself down. So take an essential oil, this is peppermint, but I would suggest lavender for anxiety and anxiousness, and you can smell it, you know, that's strong because it's peppermint, I forgot, but um, you can just take a little bit and dab it onto your wrists and like the back of your neck, kind of like perfume, just to like calm yourself down. Uh, so essential oils are really important and vital and they can actually be of help as well, but I hope you liked this week's video. Please comment below what you would like to hear next time, and I'll pick something from the comments below and do my next video on that. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed hearing about anxiety and I hope you are more informed now, but I will see you later, so 